Hey guys, I'm just sitting here in my living room all by myself in the morning. Like, what is this? <laughs> uh, this never happens. I rarely ever get to film in the living room just because the boys are usually around and stuff. But anyway, I decided it's time to film the Q&A. And I hope you guys can hear me because my washer is going in the background. But, you know, got to do two things at once. Uh, and I've tried to film this video twice. But I feel like I get so lengthy and I'm like, that's never gonna work. I have to keep my answers more clear and concise. I mean, anyway, yeah, the boys are both in school right now. And so I decided to try and tackle some of these uh, questions. And this is gonna be the part of the Q&A that is not really baby related. I did one a little while ago that was baby related. And so this one's gonna be more random, maybe more some things that you guys had asked about Mennonites. I had asked on Instagram here a while ago already, so. Um, first of all, I also want to say, in case I haven't said it in other videos, I was just reading through comments and all kinds of messages from you guys because yesterday I posted the gender reveal and I don't know when this video will go up yet, but I just want you to know that I am so thankful and I'm humbled uh, by the fact that you guys are so invested in our lives and like you're so happy for us. Um, the fact that we're having a little girl and I'm just so grateful to God that he is blessing us with this gift and whether it's a boy or it's a girl it would have been wonderful like we would have loved each each one just as much but there's something about the fact that we get to have a little girl after two boys and we're just really grateful um, and I'm just praying that I can continue to be healthy and that the, the baby would be healthy. Um, so I'm excited to share it with you guys. If you are new here, my name is Lynette, by the way, and I'd love to have you subscribe and join our channel. Also, before I go into the questions, I wanted to say that I'm going to be doing a uh, gift card giveaway again in this video. It is a uh, Darden gift card. So stick around to the end and I will give you the details of it again. So I am excited to do it this time around again. So I'm gonna try and get into the questions. I just have my phone here because that's where I saved it. What is your most favorite thing about Florida and your least favorite thing? Okay, I'm gonna try and keep it short. The best thing is probably the weather. Just the fact that I don't have to worry or like think about the fact that winter's coming like I would have in Ohio at this time of year. I love fall up there, I am gonna miss that. but. I've always in the back of my mind, it's like, oh, it's gonna get cold. And I just really do not like being cold. My least favorite thing? Well, if I were to show you my toe, you could see the results of uh, fire ant bites. That is probably one of the worst things, honestly. <laughs> I, I dislike the fact that you can't just go outside and walk around without being afraid of uh, fire ants biting you. Do you typically speak PA or Pennsylvania Dutch with Nick and or the boys? Yes, um, Nick and I speak it mostly to one another. The boys understand it completely, well, I say completely, basically. Now we do have a habit of switching to English more because that's all they talk back to us. Somehow, they just did not learn how to speak it. It makes me kind of really annoyed. <laughs> But I mean, I'm not mad about the fact that they understand English and they talk it like that. I'm glad for, but I really wish they would actually talk Dutch because it's such a blessing. Like, I just love the fact that I know two languages and I didn't have to like learn them. Have you ever been to Europe or are you planning to go sometime? Greetings from a German viewer. And I also had another question, have you ever been to Canada? So I'll just lump those two together. Yes and yes. I actually lived in Canada for a little over a year and if you haven't heard that part of it I talked about it in my testimony video so you can go watch that um, and then as far as Europe yes I've been to Germany and Switzerland on like a tour that my grandparents did and I was like 10 at the time and I've also been to Israel a couple times my mom and dad are doing the tours and I don't know if you guys know this or not but I absolutely love to travel I love to see new places that is like a big dream of mine to be able to do that more you know in the coming years does it get much hotter in florida during the summer than it does in ohio yes and no it's hotter here longer but in ohio there's a period of time during the summer where it's really humid and hot as well at least the area i come from there's not a lot of wind so in that sense we weren't like 
in shock in the fact that you know it's hot or whatever we knew it was going to be hot here um, but it's not unlike what Ohio has sometimes. The only difference is, like I said, it's hotter here for a lot longer. When do Mennonite girls start wearing head coverings and skirts full time? That really, really varies, honestly, because, okay, from my experience growing up Amish, I think I would have started wearing a covering at least for church and some things like that. I would have started by the age of two or three and maybe in a little bit more liberal settings we would start you know four or five years old and then there's places or like there's churches that don't wear coverings until maybe the girls become christians or maybe when they're baptized so it really varies there's like a broad spectrum we're not all the same and then as far as skirts i would say that generally is starts pretty young as well i mean not saying that they never wear them, but I'm saying, you know, once they're to the age where they can kind of handle, you know, wearing a dress and stuff, I'd say, I mean, most Amish little babies, I mean, they'll wear it from as young as they can, but you know, in my setting, maybe now, maybe for church, I don't know, I just like dresses, so I'm sure I'll wear dresses on my little girl, whether I have to or don't. Like, we don't have any standard as far as when we wear them or anything. It's just kind of, I don't know, it varies quite a bit, and yet I would say at a pretty young age. Why do you wear head coverings? I think it's beautiful, just curious as to why. I've talked about this a little bit, but basically I wear a head covering because I believe in the principle of wearing one where Paul talks about it in 1 Corinthians 11 where he talks about wearing a covering when praying or prophesying. It's kind of like a simple, uh, there, if you want to read it, I would definitely recommend doing that. And there's so many different opinions on it uh, as to how people decipher that scripture. So I'm not gonna like go into detail. I don't like arguments and stuff. I feel like this is a personal choice. And for me, this is the way I was brought up and I want to respect that, but I also have a conviction for it. I feel like I want to wear a covering and I feel that God is calling me to wear one and so that is why I'm wearing it. How did you do your hair? And I also had another question, how long is my hair? Do you ever wear it down around the house? Yes, I do wear it down. Obviously I have to wash it sometime. <laughs> and sometimes I don't get it put up. Now granted with going to school and everything, the boys, I'll, I have to get it done. But generally, no, I wear it up during the day and I always usually wear a covering. Um, as far as how long it is, I've trimmed it over the years just because it's really thin, but it, it used to be really long. It used to be down to my knees because we generally don't really cut our hair, at least a lot of us don't. Uh, but I've trimmed it so it's more like down to, you know, here or something, but it's still really thin. So, you know, I'll trim it occasionally. I think sometimes it's good to kind of trim it and stimulate some like growth, hopefully, but um, there's different opinions on that, obviously. Uh, as far as I, how I do it, well, the basic principle without actually showing you, it, I just have like a black one on this morning. I've gotten a lot of questions. I should just adjust, ad, ad, address that before I get into it. A lot of people ask like, what is the difference between white and black? Okay, so at home or in Ohio, I grew up Amish, so we wore the Amish, more the back box style covering. But as we were Mennonite, we then transitioned into a little bit different style cap covering. And then more recently, before we moved, we had had the option of wearing white veilings all the time, like a hanging one. So that's what I had been doing. I grew up wearing a black one quite a bit in my younger years. Uh, that's what we would have worn in Canada, it's just something we were used to. Uh, but a lot of churches will maybe have a standard as far as what type of covering. The church here we attend is more like you just have to wear a covering. That's basically the only thing they they have. So there's not like there's quite a bit of difference of you know the the type of covering people choose to wear. There to me it doesn't make a difference what color it is. It's the principle behind it. So I just like variety and personally I think that black is more practical for me. I have a lot of white veilings that just they start to look grungy after a while. I mean yeah you can wash them but they just tend to kind of they don't look very fresh but some people just prefer white so I just I just like mixing it up as far as how I do my hair generally the principle is just you put a ponytail holder in wherever you want 
it to be centered on your head, head or however. But growing up, my mom would have put in like two side barrettes here to hold uh, the hair in place better. And then she would take a rubber band and we'd twist it around and then we'd use a hairnet to kind of keep it like in a round a circle better. It just keeps the shape a lot more. And then we have what you call straight pins. Let me show you guys. It looks, um, I don't know if you guys can see that. Can you see that? It's probably not gonna focus on it, but it's just like a, a straight pin and you can't just buy them anywhere. But basically, I'll just go and like grab a little bit of the bun with it in the hair and just put it back in there, if that makes sense. But the reason you put barrettes in is you can like link it through the barrettes and that actually secures it really well. And sometimes we wouldn't have to do our hair for a couple days as far as like the back. So, cause I grew up wearing my hair up even to sleep. I don't really anymore. I just don't, I, I do sometimes depending like now if I have to sleep on my side, sometimes I'm just lazy, you know, but if I'm sleeping on my back, I don't really like that lump on the back of my head. Plus it's not good for it. So, um, but yeah, that's generally how you do it. Now I also sometimes, I don't always use my barrettes anymore because quite frankly, it actually cuts the hair a little bit. And so then you have shorter hair, you know, and eventually it'll kind of cut it. So um, I often will just wear a ponytail anymore. And actually sometimes I'll use it without a hairnet. I'm not very good at it, but then I'll like put it in a bun or like put it rubber band in and twist my hair before I twist it around. That seems to kind of keep it better or keep it in place more. And then I'll use straight pins again to put around maybe seven or eight, depending how big your hair bun is. But that's the general principle of it. Are the rules different for dress, etc.? Different in the church you attend now as compared to your last? Uh, yes, somewhat. We, at the church in Ohio, a lot of um, people like in our circles, the different churches will have kind of like a guideline to go by or like a standard as we call it. We might tend to look more alike in like the setting I grew up in. Whereas here, there's a lot of variety. There's not necessarily like a written standard in our church besides for the fact that we wear coverings and stuff. So everyone is, I feel like it's actually good because it makes me think about what convictions do I actually have instead of maybe just doing it because, well, the church says I should. Not that there's something wrong with doing it that way. I'm not like condemning it or anything. That's not, I don't want to come across that way. I am just saying that I feel like you have to decide like, okay, this is where I stand on something and what do I actually believe in, in maybe the church we attend now. And I really like that. I think it's good because then you have to you have to search the Bible more and you have to decide that for yourself. So I like that. But yeah, as far as the church here, it's it's like there's a lot of variety of how people dress, so it's not all the same. How have you developed your decorating style? You and Nick's favorite thing about each other. Um my decorating style <laughs> I was just thinking about that last night as far as the fact of like nurseries or where I started when we got married. I feel like it's just something that is constantly evolving and I, I think as time goes on you can kind of, at least for some people, you kind of figure out what you like and what you don't like and my style has very much evolved. I'm not one to like something forever and ever. There are certain things, certain classic pieces or whatever that I like and can like for a long time, but as of for right now, the style that we have going on, I don't know, it's just, I guess, stuff that I'm being drawn to. And, you know, things change, like things are always changing in the world and I'm okay with change. I like change in general, I like change. Uh, some people don't, so maybe that kind of goes along with your house. But I mean, I get a lot of inspiration from Pinterest or Instagram, I don't know. Like it's weird to me what sometimes just sparks a little bit of interest. So I don't really know. I guess it's just also maybe practice in the fact that I enjoy decorating. So I like to play around with stuff. I did have a question from someone that said she didn't want to be nosy and sorry if it's inappropriate. How do you afford to get new stuff for the house? 
Um, so we try to stick to a budget for the most part. We're Dave Ramsey fans and I feel like I don't always do the best job at sticking to it, but like in the, in the past, basically we try to save up for stuff and I would use like my own personal blow or maybe we'd have enough to kind of set aside if we're trying to buy something. But I will say that just being on YouTube and being a social media influencer, if you will, has given me a lot of opportunities and it's all because of you guys honestly because if it weren't for you guys watching my videos and supporting me i probably wouldn't have all of the opportunities that i have been getting more recently it's something i enjoy doing i feel like it's important for me to make our home a place to feel welcome and i realize that we're a blessed people that we live in a very blessed environment um, that being said I know that to me, home is something that's really important for me. I like to be, if I'm gonna live in a space, I want it to be an enjoyable place to live in. Now, I say that because it's important to do it within your means. Obviously not, you can't always do everything you wanna do. You shouldn't just be able to go out and just buy things and you know go in debt for it. That's my opinion on it. Um, but I will say just, you know, in, this being an actual job for me now, like YouTube, I do make some money off of it. Um, and just being able to work with some brands and stuff, that is giving me the ability to bring some more things in my home because it's my job. So it's my job, but it's also somewhat something that comes out of my own pocket at times. So it's not completely paid for or whatever, but it, it's starting to help me in that sense. So if that maybe make sense to you guys. I don't ever want you to feel like discontented or feeling like you have to go buy something new or whatever. Like I don't want to portray that to you guys. I don't want you to come here and feel like, oh, she has everything she wants or whatever because I don't have everything I want. And that's not what's going to make us happy anyway. I know that and yet it's hard because you know, we always want more things, but I don't want that mentality to come across to you guys. But. I also want to say that this is part of my job so it definitely you know I will have some opportunities in the future and I'm really really grateful for it honestly because you know it is helping support our family and we really we really depend on my income right now we just do I'm just being honest so I am grateful for this job that I can be able to stay at home and yet be able to bring in an income so that's kind of how we are affording to do some things. Some things come out of our own pocket and some things are starting to be maybe incorporated by companies and you know just being able to work with them. So I don't know if that made sense. What was your dating courtship journey as Mennonites? I would say I'm going to try and, and condense it. For Nick and I, we liked each other a long time before we actually started dating. And I think I might have talked about this somewhere else, but we were pretty young uh, when we first kind of started liking each other. And so it was definitely like a roller coaster experience, let's put it that way, at least for me. Maybe not for Nick as much, but you know, the thing of, oh, does he like me or what's going on? And we didn't always have communication or then we did. And so and that part wasn't easy and yet then when we actually started dating we were let me see how old were we i was okay when we actually started dating i was 21 and he was 21 i think i was going on 22 by that point so uh our dating as far as that part of it goes i would say it's pretty normal i mean we went out to eat we did you know the normal dating things we went Put putting we did activities we hung out with our youth group we hung out with our families I would say it was generally on the weekend he lived about an hour away so sometimes he would come overnight and other times I would maybe go down there or maybe it would just be a Saturday thing or maybe just a Friday night thing or a social activity with youth group or it wasn't like we had to be chaperoned I guess our parents kind of feel like we're responsible enough to you know be okay by ourselves they trust us in other words so then sometimes we'd go on you know the little weekend trips maybe with other people or whatever maybe there's a wedding and i don't know we're just kind of normal i would say i mean at least from what i would think is normal <laughs> i'm curious what you wear to the beach this might be my last question also what's your rule on hairstylist seeing your hair um as far as to the beach i mean that really varies between people i don't know if you're asking about 
everyone in like the Mennonite circles or if you're asking specifically to me. I just try to keep it modest as far as swimwear. I, I tend to like the swim with clothing because obviously it works better, but generally, you know, a modest tankini and then maybe a longer skirt or something or um, like longer shorts, uh, that kind of thing. So I just try to keep it as modest as I can. As far as a rule on hairstylist, I personally have never been to a hairstylist just because I don't, I don't really know <laughs> what the point is for me to do my hair somewhere if I'm wearing it up. I don't, I don't fuss with my hair. Like I, I don't wash it that often, honestly, because I have it up a lot and I know it's okay to not wash your hair every day. Actually, I think it's good. All right, so I'm gonna stop with that. I've talked and jabbered for a long time, so I didn't get to all the questions, but I answered a bunch of them. So I apologize if I didn't get it answered in this video, but I wanted to share my verse of the day with you guys. This is actually in the Bible app today. It is uh, Psalm 121, one and two. Well, they only have verse one, but I put in verse two because I feel like they go hand in hand. I lifted my eyes to the hills. From where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will, uh, this is verse three. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. So that is just a really good verse um, if we're going through something. Our help comes from God and I need to just remember that. Okay, as far as the giveaway, I'm gonna be doing a $50 restaurant gift card. It's one of the Darden gift cards. Let me go get it. So it's gonna be in this card right here. It is Olive Garden, Longhorn, Cheddar's, Yard House, Bahama Breeze, and Seasons 20, 22, 32, Seasons 32. And this one is gonna be uh, for $50. And unfortunately, it can only be used in the US. I'm gonna try and look for some um, giveaway stuff that I can do as far as maybe Canada. So I this is the second time I'm doing it, so I'm gonna leave it for this time. It'll have to be just US residents only. But I'm doing gift card giveaways. And so this one will be yeah, $50, and I'm gonna keep it open for about the same amount of time I did as the last one. So for 24 hours, you have time, and I just need you guys to comment. Just whatever you feel like. Keep it kind, but leave a comment. That way you'll be entered in the giveaway, and I'll use a randomizer to pick a winner, and then I'll have that winner have 24 hours to respond, and then I will send the gift card out. I like doing them shorter, and this is kind of my way of giving back to you guys since I reached 50,000 here a little bit ago. And instead of doing like one major thing, I'm just doing some smaller giveaways. So this is fun. Our favorite restaurant, probably if you would pick out of these, well, even in general, is Longhorn. Nick and I love Longhorn. I'm a steak gal. Um, but I also love Olive Garden. And I've been to Cheddar's and I've been to Yard House. Yard House is not as common, I don't think, but we did go there for my birthday one time. And then the other two I haven't been to, but I feel like it's just a good all around card. Hopefully someone will enjoy this, can go on a date, or maybe you can go out with a friend or whatever. So I hope that this can bless one of you guys and just, yeah, it's a way of me being able to give back to you. So you have 24 hours to comment and share the video. I would love that. Um, I know it's a long one, so. I appreciate if you stuck around for that, but um, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, make sure you're subscribed. <laughs> uh, that would be the main thing. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you wanna be entered in the giveaway. So that's it. I will be posting the giveaway in the community tab and hopefully on my Instagram, I'll try and kind of alert you guys. So be on the lookout for that. All right, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.